Yo, this is the Crypto Course Part 2. You know what I'm saying? We about to go even harder. I hope you learned a lot from the first part. I appreciate all the love. I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? And we're just going to spit more game. And, you know, I just got to apologize. I wish I had a better camera. I wish I had a better this and a better that. But, you know, life isn't perfect. I'm on the go. I'm on the traveling. And I want to get this information out there so you guys can start applying it and get results. And um, just uh, and no one can take this away from you. Once you know this, you're going to be ahead of the game. Straight up. No lie. You're going to be ahead of the game. So what we're going to cover in this course, we are going to cover how to use the Blockchain Explorer. Essentially, how to, how to use the online decentralized online bank account. How to check your wallet address and, you know what I'm saying, uh, how to see where your transaction is. So you're aware of where your money is and where it's going. And we're going to learn how to use the Blockchain Explorer because that's crucial. That's definitely crucial. Um, we're also going to learn how to use uh, Crypto Exchange. I'm going to explain to you how, to <clears throat> how the exchange works, how the order book works, how the charts. You know, it's going to be very brief and a very straightforward in a way where you can just be like, okay, I get it, you know? You're gonna be able to make a, a simple buy and, you know, a simple sell. And, um, yeah, you know? The next is we're gonna, <clears throat> we're gonna, and once you learn the how to use the exchange to make a simple trade, we're gonna get into crypto portfolios and how to, uh, and risk management. How to manage your risk by having different crypto portfolios and possibly different type of cryptos that'll fit those portfolios and different strategies you want to have um, that I've applied, that other people have applied, and that'll that'll help you. You know what I'm saying? You know, profit in the long run and in the short run. You know. And last but not least, we're gonna get into crypto mining. We're gonna go deeper into that. What what that is, what what that is all about, and how you could possibly get started based on your hardware and uh, your your budget and different types of crypto you could possibly mine, uh, you know what I'm saying? And don't, don't focus on making a lot of money right away. Just, just really take the time to understand the information and start applying the information. Once you start seeing where this can go, you can start seeing the potential, and it's up to you uh, uh, how much you make. I am no financial advisor. None of this is financial advice. I'm just simply explaining to you how things work and how you can go about doing them based on whatever lifestyle, budget, and you know, interest you have. So this is Crypto Course Part 2. We about to get into it. Aloha, much love. All right, all right, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Crypto trading, crypto trading. And you know what I'm saying? If you wanna see any type of return on anything, in, you know what I'm saying? You gotta learn how to trade and like, Metaphysically, we're all traders, and you know what I'm saying we'll break down that. But you gotta learn how to trade. Now, the the biggest question you have to ask yourself, or you know what I'm saying, is what exchange? What is an exchange? Exchange is a platform where you exchange currencies. Now, how do exchanges make their money? Exchanges make their money by you buying and or selling. Every exchange is different, it's not all the same, and the fees are different, it's not all the same, okay? Now, when you withdraw your money from the exchange, when you take your money off the exchange, like take your money out the bank, they're going to charge a higher fee for that. Usually it's a little bit more higher uh, than the buy and sell fees. And each cryptocurrency, based on its market evaluation, has a different rate of withdrawal fees. So that's ex essentially how exchanges, I would say, make some of their bulk of money. I can't say it because then they do so many other, other things as well. Uh, and like I said, each, each exchange is different. Now, you have, uh, you have centralized exchanges and you have decentralized exchanges. You wanna write that down, you wanna have your notes centralized exchanges and decentralized exchanges okay now ooh, wow damn all right so the most common uh type of exchanges are centralized exchanges meaning that they're uh, a central authority that they come there's there's a hierarchy okay 
there's usually a person at the top. That's, that's centralization, which means it has a central point of failure, which means it can, it, it, which means that it comes from a central server, which means it can, it's vulnerable. Let's just put it that it's more vulnerable than a decentralized exchange. So write that down. Centralized exchanges are more vulnerable than decentralized exchanges, which means they can be hacked. And most crypto exchanges have been hacked. Um, or or appear to be hacked. We'll get into that at some point. Now, when it comes to centralized exchanges, they're also based on the jurisdiction that these exchanges are whatever registered in. So there's going to be different jurisdictions based on the KYC and AML, based on whatever government or you know what I'm saying country they belong in. They're going to have to apply. Uh, comply by regulations, and the regulations are endless, you know? Um, which means that if your country's beefing with my country or something like that, and there's a sanction or tariff or whatever, that it'd be illegal to open up your business to people from different certain countries. So for instance, US Americans, we're not gonna be allowed on Binance anymore. We're not allowed on BitMEX. And that's because of the jurisdiction, and really because they don't want us to have that much financial freedom. We'll get into that later. Get into crypto politics. Now, why would you want to use a centralized exchange over a decentralized exchange if it's less secure and it's uh, more regulations? Well, honestly, there's more volume. There's more liquid. There's more volume. There's more people buying and selling on centralized exchanges than there are on decentralized exchanges. Why is that? Well. People want to have credit. Well, first of all, we're used to trusting other people, so we really haven't gone in into more crypto. We've actually like pretty much stayed the same because now we're trusting a central party, uh, 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 you know, a third party. So that is a flaw. But the main reason is that there's more people, and there's more people buying and selling. There's more liquid. There's there's more volume. There's more potential to profit. So. That brings in more people, which brings in more people. So that's why you have centralized. And if anything were to go wrong, which it does quite often, you at least could, I don't know, as far as crypto exchanges, you, you would think they have your back, but in all reality, they really don't. And a lot of exchanges can freeze your account. They can withdraw your funds. They could charge you higher fees. Like it, it's, it's real grimy. It's real grimy. And people deal with it every day. I think I've dealt with it once or twice on different exchanges where it's not even worth it. They just pretty much steal your money. Like they can, they, they can do whatever they want. It's their account. You're putting your crypto in their wallet, just like in a bank. You're putting your money in the bank's wallet, and so they can do whatever they want with it. Essentially, now that's where decentralized exchanges come in, uh, come into play. Is that the money? never leave the money is not handled by a central authority there's no person you know what i'm saying it's put into a smart contract so when you're buying and selling that you're guaranteed to either get what you're what you uh what you're buying or selling or you're guaranteed your money back because the smart contract acts as the, the third the trusted third party and so you'll put your money from your wallet it's pretty much wallet to wallet essentially with the smart contract acting as the middleman. And that's way more secure. You're having full control, full control over your finances when you use a decentralized exchange. And so there's less worry and there's less stress about someone else or uh, somebody else stealing your funds or freezing your account or nothing. It's just not possible uh, on the decentralized exchanges. Now, the cons of that, so yeah, Decentralized exchanges are safer. You can write that down. The cons of decentralized exchanges is that there's less volume, there's less people, which means there's less buying and selling, which means there's less money, less money to potentially make. And the reason there's less people is because it takes it's a bit of a learning curve how to use decentralized exchanges. It takes a few extra steps that most people aren't willing to take, or if you're new to cryptocurrency, it'll just confuse you, and you may some way end up losing your money. Versus using Coinbase or Uphold or, you know what I'm saying, other centralized exchanges. So that's kind of where, where, where they kind of weigh, weigh each other, you know what I'm saying? Because centralized exchanges, 
they're more vulnerable, but they have more value. Decentralized exchanges, less vulnerable, but less value. You know what I'm saying? So you want to choose. So when it comes to trading, you want to choose which type of exchange you feel most comfortable using. And to start off, I, I would recommend you use a centralized exchange because there's more people using it. There's probably more information about it and more videos on, the, on how to, you know what I'm saying? And they, each exchange has their own way of doing it. Now, I would obviously, so, okay. So now, once you choose, say, hey, I'm gonna choose a centralized exchange, which centralized exchange are you gonna use? Think about it. There's, there's, there's hundreds of exchanges. What are you willing to give up and in order to use for the exchange? Some of the exchanges, you have to give up your ID and identification right away before you can even use the exchange. Some exchanges, they'll let anyone use it, but when you want to upgrade or when you want to when you start want to making bigger trades, making bigger money, they're going to limit you on how much you can withdraw until you submit your ID or take the next level of verification where and then you can withdraw more and then even higher you can withdraw more. So that's when you're stepping your game up as a trader, but you're using a centralized exchange and they want you know, the more you withdraw, the more risk for them. So then they want something, your pri they want your privacy, they want your identity and exchange. That's how the game works. That's how the game works. Now, certain exchanges charge fees, percentage fees. So there, it's a per percentage of what you're buying and selling, a percentage of that. Some exchanges charge that. Other centralized exchanges or exchanges in general charge a flat rate. So no matter what you're buying or what you're selling, it's a flat rate fee. Now, here's the thing. Um, it, in some ways, depending on how much you're buying and selling, it may be more expensive to use a percentage. Same thing on the other side. Sometimes, depending on how much you're buying and selling, it may be more expensive just for the flat fee. So that's where you kind of have to kind of, everything kind of weighs itself out. Nothing really comes for free. Everything kind of balances itself out. So these are the things that you need to be prepared for when you're for, when you're choosing your crypto exchange, and you want to know how the exchange makes its money, whether it's a percentage or a flat fee, how much is the withdrawal fee? Because when you're taking your money out of the exchange, you need to make sure that you're withdrawing enough so that th that fee isn't really hurting you. You know, so to start off with a really small budget is kind of tough. But to start off with about a hundred dollar budget, you can kind of work with it. Some exchanges are cheaper than others. Some exchanges offer discounts for new people, referral fees. Like I said, you just got to do your due diligence on the exchange. And um, yeah, you know. But once you choose the exchange, next you want to choose a trading pair. Okay, write that down. Once you choose the exchange, you want to choose a trading pair. What is a trading pair? A trading pair is a pair one two that you trade so the most common one that we're going to look into uh right right now after this is the uh, bitcoin to ethereum or ethereum to bitcoin trading pair so eth slash btc that would be a trading pair that means you're you're you're, you're selling your bitcoin for ethereum or you're taking your ethereum to buy bitcoin that's how it works so that's the trading pair and that's crucial you want to look at a trading pair. Now that that's you know what I'm saying, what are you willing to sell your Bitcoin for? What are you willing to buy in exchange for that? You know what I'm saying. So there's there, and then there's infinite amount of cryptocurrencies. You know what I'm saying. There's Ethereum, Ethereum Class, Monero, Dash Dash, and then there's different trading pairs. Not there's not always a uh, so there's they for instance they, there could be um, a Bitcoin to Ethereum trading pair. An Ethereum to an Ethereum Classic trading pair. So it's not just always Bitcoin. It could be Ethereum to something else. So that's what you want to look at. You want to figure out what what are you trying to what 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 are you trying to get, and how how are you how are you trying to sell it? Because the strategy for me is I sell cryptocurrencies that if 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 the price in, ends up going down. I still don't mind being stuck because my, all right, I'll slow down. Generally speaking, for most crypto OG traders, the end goal is to get more Bitcoin. 
the end goal. So the only reason they're taking their, their, their Bitcoin that they have to trade it is to trade it so they can sell it at a higher price to get more Bitcoin. Okay? That's the strategy. Now, you can get more Ethereum or you can get whatever it is you're into. That's the reason you're trading is to co come back to the original currency at a, at a higher profit, at a more of a gain. Okay? So, now Ethereum to Bitcoin trading pair. Ethereum is the second most valuable cryptocurrency. It has a lot of use cases, especially for decentralized applications. There's a lot of value. It has a large market cap. So even if I buy Ethereum and the price of Ethereum drops and I still don't sell because I never, I never uh, buy high and sell low, I hold on to it. And that's one of my strategies is that I'm not purchasing anything that I don't mind being stuck with. That's one of my, my ways of risk management. Because I understand that even if I'm stuck with Ethereum, I can still use it. I can still do it. And the fact that it's, you know what I'm saying, historically, it, it's only going to go up. Well, I wouldn't say only, but I wouldn't never speak in absolutes. Absolutely. Um, I don't mind being stuck with Ethereum. So I trade currencies that I don't mind being stuck with, even if the price goes down, because I know after a certain amount of time, uh, the evaluation will go up and I will be able to sell out of profit. So that's one of the strategies. And um, so you want to choose an exchange, centralized or decentralized. You want to uh, understand how the exchange works. Then you want to choose a trading pair. And based on whatever you're willing to, you know what I'm saying, trade with and what you're, what you're interested in. You know, if the, if the end goal is to get more Bitcoin, then choose something that mo a lot of people are trading back and forth between Bitcoin. So what we're gonna do is we're, we're gonna look into how to look at these charts. Don't worry, it's gonna be new. It's not that confusing. Don't overestimate it. Just take it easy. You know what I'm saying? We'll go slow. And we're gonna look at a trading pair uh, on Binance. I don't, right now, I don't recommend you to sign up for Binance only because US customers will be cut off if you are in the US. Um, there's ways to bypass it, but I still, don't, I still don't feel it's worth it as far as getting a VPN because if for some reason you accidentally log in from an American, they can kind of take your money and say that you're committing illegal acts, you know what I'm saying? So I, I am currently looking for the next best crypto exchange for Americans. I still haven't quite found one yet. And it's kind of dirty how they're doing Americans as far as exchanges and cryptocurrency. They really don't want us to profit from, they really want us to keep, we think we are on the land of the free, we're not, man. And once you start seeing the regulations they have against Americans as far as doing business online or global, man, they do not want us to escape in any way. So that's something to be worried about. That's something to be worried about. All right, let's get into it. All right, family. So this is an exchange called Binance. Uh, like I said, I don't recommend American users to sign up because they will be discontinuing American users in September. Now, the trading pair we're on, this particular trading pair, is Ethereum to Bitcoin. Okay, you're gonna see the trading pair. So now we know the exchange, now we know the trading pair. Let's check it out. The last price. This is the last price in Satoshi evaluation. This is the last price in the USD evaluation. Within the last 24 hours, how much has changed and what uh, it dropped down? About negative 2.9, uh, 19%. This is the Satoshi evaluation of how much it dropped down. Within the last 24 hours, this is the high within the last 24 hours, this is the low. So that kind of gives you a sense of what the market was able to do within a certain period of time, which will be 24 hours. Now, just to get this out of the way, over here, don't worry about this box. This is a trading pair box to find more trades. So for instance, Monero, uh, Ethereum Classic, and we're under Bitcoin. So don't worry about this box, it's just to help you navigate to other crypto trading pairs. All right? Now, let's jump over to this left side, okay? 
Now, all these pinks slash reds, all the reds, are the cell orders, okay? So all, this whole box is all cell orders. Does that make sense? So, this is the price of Bitcoin they're selling at. This is, the, this is the amount of Ethereum they're selling. And this is how much Bitcoin they're getting for selling this amount of Ethereum at this price. Does that make sense? So this times this would equal this, okay? All right. Um, down in the green box is all the buy orders, okay? Now, it's the same thing. At what price? How much? The total cost of all that. How much is going to cost them to buy in Bitcoin, okay? Now, this number in between is in between here, these two. So, this is the price. As you see, it goes up. As you see, it goes down. For every seller, there has to be a buyer. For every buyer, it has to be a seller. Now, these two guys need, this guy and this guy need to meet at a common price before any order gets triggered. Everybody behind this person, same thing here, everybody behind this person is waiting for these two people to make a deal. For them to be like, nah, 25 cents. Nah, 20 cents. Nah, 22. Nah, 23. Nah, 22.5. All right, 22.5. And that's when the order gets executed when these two people come to an deal and then the next two people get in line. That's, that's essentially what trading is, okay? All right, so now that we get that, this is the price of the actual price right now, and that's between these two, uh, these two guys. So you, you'll see it go up and you'll see it go down quite often because that's how markets work, okay? Now let's hop over here real quick to the uh, trade history. The trade history is the actual live feed of what's what's happening. So as you see, these last three are of all buy orders, okay? You see, this was a sell order. This is how much, this is the time, okay? So this is the live feed of what's going on right now. So you're gonna see buy, buy, sell, 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 buy, buy, sell, and that's pretty much what this is as well, right here. Okay, so that's trade history. That's just good to know if you're looking at, if you're day trading especially, uh, what, what's going on. Now, this chart right here, don't let it intimidate you, okay? It's a lot of lines and squiggly lines and pinks and blues. You know, in other charts, it's reds and greens. I mean, pinks and blues, pinks and greens. Um, this is a chart. We're not going to go super in-depth, but we're going to get a general understanding of what this chart is, okay? So, for now, ignore these squiggly lines that you're seeing in the background and focus on these blocks, okay? What these blocks are... These blocks are called candles, okay? Candles. And each candle represents a certain time frame, okay? The time frame is right here. We're on the one day. So each candle represents one day. Now we can switch to the hour. There's different forms. There's one hour, two hour, four hour. So let's switch to the four hour. All right, so now each candle represents a four hour time period. Now, the color of the candle is when it went up in price. The, the, and so you're going to see it, if it goes up at that four hour, then it went green. For the next four hours, it went another green. For the, so the price went up at each of these four hours. Now, in this hour, it dropped. The price dropped. People sold more within this four hours. And then the next four hours, people sold more again and again. And then bought, bought. So that's essentially what it is. You can choose the one week, right? You can choose the one month. You can go back or as close, you can even choose the five minute. If you're really day trading, you can even choose the one minute. So this is the time frames these candles represent. And based on whatever trading style or strategy, um, you know what I'm saying, you have, then, or you're interested in, you can look at the different time charts, okay? All right. Now, down here is value. Down here is how many people are buying and how many people are selling. And that's it's kind of like a velocity thing. So as you see, more people uh, within this hour sold, and then over here there was a big sell-off, and then more people bought. So that's kind of the uh, the people buying and selling, and uh, the ratio, the velocity of that. Okay. Now that's as far that's as deep as we're gonna go because I don't want to confuse you guys because this can be analyzed in so many different ways. It's unbelievable. You'll spend the rest of your trading career analyzing these charts. So, for instance, TradingView is uh, one of the most popular um, 
trading charts. And you just get, we won't go into indicators because this is still a beginner course, but there's many different indicators, the MACD, Bollinger Bands, the RSI. Um, I mean, uh, it's, it's, infinite, it's infinite. There's people cre keep creating more and more. Okay, now, foreign exchange. We're not gonna worry about margin at all. Don't you dare at all touch it. Crypto roots will, yeah. Don't touch margin. I'm coming at you. Yes. Don't touch margin. So, focus on a regular trade on the exchange. You have different types of trades, limits, markets, stop limits. We are going to focus just on limit and market for the beginner course. All right. Now, this shows how much Bitcoin I have available, literally shows the wallet time, to buy Ethereum. On the other side, it shows how much Ethereum I have to sell, okay? So over here is the buy box, over here is the sell box. Be very, very, pay attention to what you're doing. You, If you're not paying attention and you accidentally make a buy for a sell or sell for a buy, you will lose money and it will only be your fault, okay? So this in the price box is how much you're willing to buy at. Okay, now you can check the price over here, you can check the price over here, but this you're gonna type and then you can see the USD. So if I were to change it and I say now nah, I want a cheaper price, I'm gonna change this probably five, either take the five off or change it to a four or change it to a three. I'll, I'll, get, I'll start typing it in until I get the, the price that I want. Okay, um, the amount of Ethereum. You take, you, so you say you select a price, so I'm, for instance, I'm gonna click this box right here. So you can select a price. Just click a box, that's your, and then now it'll pop up here, so that price. Now how much Ethereum you uh, am I willing to, so the most it says I can get, based on what I have in my wallet, is 0 0.005 Ethereum, okay? Now, or you can just click, based on how much you have, you can click 25% of what your whole wallet, 50%, 75%, 100%, okay? And then down here is the total in Bitcoin of how much you'll be paying for this amount of Ethereum at this price, okay? All right, S stay with me fam. Just rewind the video. If you need a little explanation, it's, it's all right. Only on the other side, it's the exact opposite, pretty much. So you're gonna be selling Bitcoin at a certain price, but you're going to be selling Ethereum at a certain price in Bitcoin. So, and but I can only sell what I have. So it says the most I can sell is, you see the box pop up. It's pretty self-explanatory. So it says, this is I can only sell at this price. If I'm selling this much at this price, this is what I'll get in return. That's how much Bitcoin I get. So I'm actually going to make a trade, a sell trade. Now, what I like to do is figure out what were my last trades? So Binance kind of, they kind of changed their platform. So give me a second to figure out what is going on here. Okay, so I'm, yeah, you're going to go down to trade history. Okay. All right. So hopefully this internet works. All right, no records found. Let's see, search all. So you gotta change the months, essentially. So I'm gonna go back all the way to May 1st, till now. All right, I'm gonna search, all right, cool. Now, I can see all my trades that I've made within that certain given a time period. So I bought Ethereum. So, these are my latest trades. I bought Ethereum at 2695, 269, okay? 26959. And this is how much I bought, okay? This is how much it cost me. So, let's back up to, right? And let's see whether the price is going up or going down. 269. So, the price is going down. 
So right now, since the price is going down, I do not want to sell that Ethereum that I bought. Um, but if the price goes down, maybe I can get Ethereum at a better price. So let me put in a buy order. Let me put in a buy order uh, right now. Okay. So I'm gonna put in a buy order for I mark I, this is this is the price right now that I'm buying in two fifty six zero one. This is a limit order, by the way. So right now we're only gonna focus on limit orders. You can do market orders. Market orders are just whatever the price is right now. I don't recommend market orders as a as a beginner because you're not all, you're guaranteed to make the sell or to make the order, but you're not guaranteed to get the price you want. Right now I want to focus the new beginners on getting the price you want. But the thing about it, your whole order may not be triggered. So, but don't worry about it, usually it will. So at this price, at this price, I'm going to buy this amount of Ethereum. It's going to cost me this much. I click buy, okay? Oh, so here we go, order failed. Total value must be this amount of Bitcoin, okay? So currently I do not have enough Bitcoin in my wallet because I usually use this account to purchase altcoins. So, um, you will have to put Bitcoin in your wallet. And then you're able to make the order. It'll pop up and say order triggered, or you know what I'm saying? And then you're gonna see an open orders. Like I have an open order right now for BNB, Binance. It's a sell order, it's, a, it's a, the type of order it is, it's a limit, so I'm waiting for the price. Limit orders are, I'll back up, I'll slow down. Limit orders are is when the price hits a certain point, something gets triggered, a buy or a sell. So it's a way to kind of to profit from the market without having to pay so much attention to it. Because I have a busy you know, life and I got things to do and I don't need to be sitting in front of a computer all day worrying about the price of something. Well, what I can do is take an hour of my time once a day and set up my limit buys and my limit sells depending on where I feel the market's going, where the market's going. Now, I think that's a, that's a good way for beginners to learn, is that you can, you can wake up, you can do things, and then you can check later to see if your orders got triggered. Now, there is some downside to limit orders, but we're not going to go deep into that, um, just because it's, it's not relevant until you got bigger money on the line. And, you know, we can get into that in the mentor show or whatnot. So then you're going to see your orders down here for the last... 24 hours, and essentially, most exchanges work the exact same way. You're gonna see these same boxes. You're gonna see, the, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna see the same buys, same sells. The layout is gonna be different. Now, you just wanna find a crypto with a layout that you get used to, that you're comfortable, but essentially, this is the general display and understanding of what a trading pair on an exchange is. Do not let it intimidate you. It's very simplistic. You can get as deep as you want into these charts, but I I don't think it's worth it. It's called technical analysis. Write that term down. Technical analysis is when you're heavily using analytics, um, you know, to analyze the market, to get the best prediction. Nothing's guaranteed. Nothing is guaranteed. I don't care what traders tell you, nothing is guaranteed. But you're looking for the best prediction based on history, outcome, different types of parameters. Uh, that will give you a better insight of where the market's going and what's happening with the market. That is, so this is the beginning to your trading career, career as a trader. Nothing is going to, you won't have any more opportunity to make money on your own, by yourself, all alone, in a global economy. Nothing, this, we have never seen this kind of technology and opportunity before. So it's up to you to how much money you make. It's up to you. And I say start small. Turn ten dollars of Ethereum from ten, turn ten dollars of Bitcoin into a hundred dollars of Ethereum. You know what I'm saying? And you know what I'm saying? Sell that Ethereum. Make it happen on a small scale. Develop the emotional discipline. You're gonna see the market go up and down. Just understand, get a glimpse and a feel for where the market is going. You're gonna have a better understanding than someone who's just guessing and guessing who's trying to get rich right away and guessing. They're gonna end up giving their money away to the market because write this down. The market is a vehicle that transfers wealth from the inpatient to the patient. Warren Buffett, I'm gonna say it again. The market is a vehicle that transfers wealth
from the inpatient to the patient. All right. Aloha, family. As you saw on the last video, I didn't have enough red, enough Bitcoin in my, uh, my account to make a real uh, buy. And that's mainly just because I spend most of my bread uh, on my accounts for my altcoins. Um, so you're going to see me go altcoin shopping. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in my BTC account and I'm going to show you how I'm going to send a transaction. First, I'm going to go into my Binance account to get my Binance address because that's where I'll be sending my, my, my Bitcoin. So now this is my Binance account under Binance or just most accounts work the same way you're going to go to your Bitcoin and what I want to do is I want to deposit Bitcoin into this Bitcoin wallet on this exchange okay they have withdrawal and they have trade don't worry about that right now I want to deposit Bitcoin so I'm gonna go and click deposit okay now this is this is going to be my Bitcoin address to deposit for this account alright so now I'm gonna click copy address okay now that the address is copied okay now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull up my Bitcoin's account and then you're gonna it says receipt address paste all right so we're gonna paste the address right here because I click send this is my Bitcoin wallet I click send and this is the menu that pops up so how much Bitcoin do I want to send? And you're going to see the USD equivalent. So I'm going to send around 100 bucks or so. Let's see. Maybe a, a little less. Let's see. Eight, five. All right. Now let me do eight, one. Only because I'm trying to make it a flat hundred. And you can see this is the fee. So the fees, it says standard. You have different type of fees, high, medium, low, and how much you're gonna pay per byte. Don't worry about this for the beginning, but then, so whatever I want to send, this is gonna be how much. So I'm gonna just keep messing around. This is what you do when you wanna get the exact. You keep messing around till you get kinda close to exactly what you want. So let's try. I'm going to just send 0, 0 0.238. That's the equivalent of $99.10. See, 90, uh, $97 is how much I'm actually getting. And with the fees, the fees go to the miners. That's what makes it decentralized and peer to peer. So we're compensating them for uh, using their time and energy, including this into the Bitcoin blockchain. So I'm going to click continue. And since this is my cold wallet, which we're going to go over in the next lesson, uh, different types of wallets. Now I just have to verify on my hard device. Give me, give it a second. Hang in there. So this is one of the top levels of crypto security is having a cold storage wallet and it stores your private keys offline and we'll go more into detail so I'm verifying the transaction on my hardware device making sure and I'm also double checking that my address matches this one you always want to double check the first five and the fr uh, the, uh, the last five just so that you know you're getting the most accurate address because there's no reversible transaction folks okay so I'm confirming the transaction broadcasting the transaction all right so it says sent my account balance will be up to date now this is the account it came from this is the date this is the fees that I paid status it's not confirmed which means it's not included in the blockchain now the transaction ID this is a the special hash ID that of that transaction and it's from this address I am going to click view and Explorer all right and another window should pop up this is what you call a blockchain explorer this is your decentralized online bank account okay this is the transaction ID of this particular transaction the status of this transaction is unconfirmed 
it is not included on the blockchain it is waiting in what they call a mempool it's it's a it's a transaction pool of uh it's a pool of transactions waiting to be included in the blockchain and it says eta estimated time in two blocks which is on average close to 20 minutes okay transaction fees this is how much i paid per byte says i'm overpaying by 41 percent i'm not quite sure why how yet because you know i guess i get it, it's so many variables but that's something to figure out of how can i pay less the size of the transaction 249 bits the virtual size you know don't worry about this this is all computer science terms computer science terms and so essentially this is this is the the transaction uh one right here and they get included with other transactions to get included in a block so once this transaction is confirmed i will see that that deposit will be in this account so i'm gonna pause the video and we're gonna wait for it to go through and then you guys can watch me go altcoin shopping aloha Aloha family. So we're back at it. As you can see, my transaction went through 0 0.00823. Uh, it took two confirmations. That means it had to be confirmed by everyone on the blockchain twice. That's how each, each exchange is different as far as the confirmations. But now I got money in my Bitcoin account. Let's go shopping. Honestly, I'm not going to lie. This is like one of my favorite parts about cryptocurrency is but going altcoin shopping because altcoins are really where you're going to make the bread at people bitcoin's going to get you some some good some good returns but purchasing altcoins is definitely where you're going to get where you're going to start making the real the real money so so you know what because i'm so excited about monero which is a privacy coin i want to buy some monero right away i'm gonna just buy it I'm gonna buy it right away. I ain't even, you know, I ain't even tripping right now because I already know the potential. We'll get into that, you know, what I'm saying some other time on the data privacy course. We'll get into privacy coins. So I'm gonna go to trade and I'm gonna choose which uh, trading pair I want, and that's XMR to BTC. Okay. So it's bringing up the the page. Give it a second. Give it a second. I'm actually gonna change this to night mode so it's a, easier to read. And as you already know, this is what we just went over, the last price, the buys, the sales. So now we're gonna go into buying Monero. Now, this is my Bitcoin wallet. This is how much Bitcoin I have to spend. And I want, how much Monero do I wanna buy? So, if I put 25% of my total, you know what? I like to be pretty frugal. So, let me, I'm probably gonna get, 0.15 you know I'm gonna get 15.15 Monero right now and just so I can spread it out because if I want to go alt altcoin shopping with other altcoins so the price I'm buying at two two so soon yeah this is a little cheaper than what it's what the market price is right now as you can see it's a little cheaper in fact the price dropped so I don't want to pay that much so now I'm gonna choose I'm gonna choose a price. I'm gonna choose four. So if it hits 0 0.00854, this is a limit buy. That means if it hits this price, it's gonna purchase this amount of Monero, and this is how much it's gonna cost me. So I'm gonna click a buy order right now. As you can see, this is how limit created, submit it. This is confirmed. You're gonna see it right here. So this, uh, these are my open orders. These are the open, these are the orders that have not been triggered, but they're on the market. You can see right here with this yellow sign, this is my order. So I'm behind everybody else. So this is how I strategically play my game is that I make sure I get in cheaper than what the market price is. I never really pay the market price because I know I can always get a bit cheaper. You know, that it's not certain, but you know, that's how I trade, okay? So let's let's purchase some ETC. These are the coins I'm into. You don't have to be into them, but I always make sure I when I go altcoin shopping, I always make sure to get some Ethereum Classic. 
So if I can see we're 25%, let me just get, you know what, let me get 1.5, you know, be a frugal. I may not be able to afford it. Let's see if this reaches the minimum amount, okay? Let's see. So wait, wait, what price am I buying it at? You always want to double check this. I'm rushing it and I need to slow down. I always want to make sure I get in, you know what, I'm going to put 660. You know, I want to get in a little cheaper. I want to get in, a, and it sells you the price, 7.82. I'm buying, let's see if it triggers. It says order failed because I didn't hit the minimum order. So let me bump it up a little bit. This is just how you learn how to trade. This is not supposed to be super professional. I'm going to show you the mistakes you're going to make. So now we, we went from 1.5 to 1.6. Now we hit the minimum trade. I'm buying at 660 and order created, limit order created. So as you can see, these are the open orders. This is how much Bitcoin I have left to spend. What else do I want to buy? Let me go back to my wallet. Let me go back to my wallet. I usually like to stack up on my altcoin. So they switched the page up. Let me see. Okay. So you know what? I'm going to buy some more Ethereum. I'm not going to lie. You got to always have Ethereum on deck. So I'm going to buy some Ethereum right now. Sorry, they switched up. Uh, Binance is switching up the, the menus, but it's roughly the same thing. I know this this caught me off guard too, but like it's roughly the same thing. So, and you're, you're going to see exchanges look like, just get used to it. You know, honestly, just get used to it. So uh, what's the price? Five, two, seven. Uh... I'm gonna get even cheaper. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna get even cheaper than it, than it is right now. 0 0.02. I'm gonna put 0 0.005. All right. So at, at this price, I'm gonna point you, uh, I'm gonna purchase 0 0.05 Ethereum. All right. I'm gonna click a buy order. Create it. All right. Open orders. I'm gonna have to change the screen kind of confusing um, all right so let it, let's go back to our balance forgive me folks Binance switched it up on me switched it up on me now I don't even know how to get back to the page okay I'm gonna go to old website uh, they switched it up on me okay I'm just used to the old website now let's go back to balances. Okay. And I'm definitely going to buy some NEO. Definitely going to buy some NEO. You know what I'm saying? NEO to BTC. All right. Definitely going to buy some NEO. What's the price of NEO right now? One, four, five, six. I'm gonna put it one five four five zero. You know what I'm saying? Let's see, it's twenty five percent of that is. I'm gonna at least get. I'm gonna get one point five neo. Yeah. So I'm gonna buy some neo. There you go. So you see how these orders are stacking up? They haven't been triggered yet. So what's happened is that my Bitcoin is in a temporary. The Bitcoin that I'm using to purchase. It's in a temporary hold because it's it's ready to uh, to have the order. So I'm gonna show you what that means. So if we go back to balances, you're gonna look under Bitcoin. You're gonna see total amount of Bitcoin. Then you're gonna see available, and then how much Bitcoin is in uh, uh, on reserve for the orders. Okay. All right. So. I'm gonna take a second. This is probably gonna be the the end of this video because I want to take a second and strategically think how I'm gonna spend the rest of this Bitcoin on these other altcoins. Uh, I may buy some Dogecoin. I may buy some Litecoin. Um, you know what I'm saying? I may, I may buy some some Cardano. Stack up on some mana. I don't know. So that's that's the general gist of going altcoin shopping. Depositing Bitcoin into your bank account looking it up as you can see here's the transaction. Here's the two confirmations now So it's included in the block and here's the block number so we can click the block number and we can see This block 
and this is the block number and we'll get into this in the next part and these are all the transactions included in this block so this is you're able to see exactly everything there's nothing that goes on on the blockchain that it's an open public ledger but they're not you don't know it's you because of these encrypted hashes but you can see where your money is you can see what's going on and yeah now this uh, transactions include in the blockchain forever the money I sent from my cold storage wallet cold storage to my Binance account and I have the details to prove it and I have the block number to prove it so there you go that's the general gist of uh, learning how to trade making a trade making a buy order limit order and you know putting money onto your uh, crypto account maybe next lesson will show you how to withdraw it's pretty much the same thing but opposite just taking money off your Binance account and putting it into a different wallet it's gonna cost a fee but it's generally the same thing alright much love family peace alright family let's get into it let's talk about this whole crypto mining we heard so much about it. Everybody keeps talking about it. Crypto Roots keeps bragging about it. Why is it so important? Why, why, is, it, why is it so revolutionary, man? You know? Um, and like I said, it's printing your own money whenever you want. That is, first of all, that is the most, rev you can't disrupt the system or any system of centralized government fiat money than anyone printing their own money whenever they please. You know, so that alone, whew, man, you know, that's like, you couldn't even dream something like that almost, you know? But here it is, we're living on it, we're living in it. We're living in it. So we're gonna go into, you know, we're gonna talk about this crypto mining thing. You know, take your notes. It's gonna be a little bit. You're gonna learn a thing or two. All right, so, so, so the mining work we're talking about today is going to be the proof of work. Proof of work is the the consensus algorithm that runs on Bitcoin, and essentially what proof of work means is that you have to verify to the network that you put in the computational power to find this block, uh, to mine this block and find it um, based on consensus. So it takes a lot of time and energy to do that with the proof of work mining. Now, cryptocurrency mining includes two major functions. Mostly, namely, adding transactions to the blockchain, okay, securing and verifying. So when I send you a transaction, you send me a transaction, that has to be included into a block, which needs to be put, found, put onto the blockchain. Now, the miners have to verify that, all, that your transaction is valid, and um, that, and so when they verify that it's valid, they you send them a fee. So when I send uh, when I send you a transaction or you send me a transaction, there's a small fee that goes for the to the miner to incentivize him to include your transaction into the block. Okay. Now, once this miner successfully finds a block after he's already grouped group the transactions in the block based on how big the block could be. So it's like filling up the van as much people can fit in the van before we go across the border, you know what I'm saying? So you want so they're going to fit as many transactions as they can into the block. All those transaction fees goes to that miner for including that in the block. So a block could be anywhere from 12 transactions to maybe about 60 or 80 transactions depending on the size of the transactions these people were sending. You know what I'm saying? So when a miner successfully uh, verifies all the transactions, includes, includes, in, includes them in a block, and he successfully finds the nonce, um, which is the proof of work, which is the math um, problem he's trying to solve, he gets rewarded in the form of a block reward. Okay? That block reward would be the Bitcoin for finding the proof of work. So not only does the miner get all the fees that he put for all the transactions in the block, but he gets the block reward for finding the block, okay? Now, like it says, mining needs a computer and a special program, which helps miners compete with peers in solving complicated mathematical problems. 
This would need to be uh, huge computer resources um, and regular intervals. So there's mining pools as well would attempt to so uh, solve the block ha uh, having transaction data using cryptographic hash functions. Don't worry about all that. You know, if you're not, if you don't get what all that means, cryptographic hash functions and block transaction data, don't worry about it. It's all brand new. I get it. This is the intro to crypto course, but there's a very specific functions and a, very, and, and a particular hash, hash is, um, a way to scramble data let's just put it that way okay cryptographic is a way to like scramble data hide data and, and it represents larger amounts of data okay so for instance <clears throat> these math problems are too hard for the average computer or individual to solve or not individual average computer to solve on their own it, you know, imagine, you know how fast computers solve math problems, I mean, in the blink of an eye. So imagine your computer, your laptop, struggling, struggling, struggling to f solve this math problem. So much so that in order to even better your chances of uh, solving the math problem and making money by being rewarded by the block reward, you have to join other people and share your resources with theirs. It's called a mining pool. So imagine you and a group of other people on the internet are working towards solving the same math problem, but all, all you guys, even with all your computational power, are still struggling to solve it. That's, that's how difficult the math problem is, if you get where this is going. So a hash value is a numeric value, fixed length, that uniquely identifies data, okay? So it's like a scrambled signature or something, you know what I'm saying, you can see it as that. Miners use their computer to zero in on a hash value less than the target. So hitting the difficulty target, watch the video, uh, watch the uh, difficulty retargeting. And the first to crack it is considered the one, the first to find or hit the target uh, uh, difficulty is the one that gets the block reward. Okay, so everyone is incentivized. Everyone is incentivized to, to find the block reward. So they're incentivized to participate in the system the way the system was designed, okay? So, I know that was a lot of information. Rewind, take notes, you know what I'm saying? It's all good, it's all good. All right, let's go through this. Next slide. What is a block reward? Block reward, for instance, the new cryptocurrency distributed by the network to the miners. So to break it down even deeper, the new block reward is a new account entry into the uh, account database. It's like new money showed up, essentially. So that's how crypto crypto is generated. So that's how that Bitcoin is generated is through the miners. Now the miners are the ones who sell their Bitcoin on the market in order for a profit to pay for their electricities and whatever they need to, you know what I'm saying, to keep on mining. So this is how the Bitcoin hits the rest of the world for the people who aren't mining is when the miners sell their Bitcoin on the market and now it becomes available in an open economy, open uh, market where for people can buy and sell and hold and you know what I'm saying? So that's how Bitcoins are actually uh, created and distributed into the rest of uh, the economy, the cryptocurrency economy, Bitcoin economy, all right? Is it easy to mine crypto? Yes and no, yes and no. Many factors to consider are the cost of your electricity in your area. Facts, homie, just straight up facts, homie. And if you're on the grid, it's gonna cost more. If you're off grid, who knows? Who knows if you're able to have a big enough system to pull on off grid um, you know, power to power your mining rig, you know? And if you did, who knows how long you could power it because the sun's not always out. So that's always things to keep in consideration. You can do half and half. Your hardware capabilities, you know what I'm saying? Because there's different types of miners, there's different types of processors. So you have CPUs, central processing units. You have an upgrade, which is GPUs, graphical graphics processing units. For, so like for high tech gaming, for, for gamers who like to play uh, high tech games, they, have, they need uh, more processing power to power the graphics for their video games. You can mine cryptocurrency. You can make more of a profit mining on that than a regular laptop. Now, the big bad beast giants in the mining game 
are the ASICs, the ASIC miners, application specific uh, interface and circuit. And those are the ones who are really own, own the mining game. And you really can't mine Bitcoin without an ASIC miner. They're more expensive, they use more energy and electricity, and they don't last nearly as long. Okay? So you need to also consider the market price of the crypto. Um, is it even worth it? Is it even worth it because if it's too high, you may not get anything if the price is too high because so many people are already beat you to the game. So it's probably, you know, you got to figure out, you know, is it worth it as far as the, um, the market price, you know? Um, which crypto are you mining and how many others are mining it as well exactly? So is it easy to mine crypto? Uh, depending on a lot of things now. As far as the market price and which cryptos, you may not it may not be profitable, so it may not be easy. You know, you're just using extra electricity and getting nothing for it. So you may have a miner set up, but you may be mining at a loss essentially. So these are some things to consider when uh, considering mining cryptocurrencies. Okay, like I said, most laptops and uh, desktops are going to take more time to generate profit because they. Uh, they, they process slower than, than faster ones, but that doesn't mean you can't. I'm about to give you a strategy. I'm about to give you a strategy. All right. How can I make profit from mining on my laptop? Let's get into it. Let's get into it. I know you guys paid for some game to make some effing money. Let's get to it. All right. So, I, mostly this is the order, okay? Find a crypto you're able to mine on your laptop for proficient. Okay? Proficiently means you, you can get at least one, maybe two, maybe three of the units a day, okay? Depending on what it is and depending on the market price. Like I said, there's so many variables, but it's something that you can consistently get a payout to your wallet, okay? Okay? Make sure that it has a BT BTC, which is Bitcoin trading pair on some exchange. You want to go to Coin Paprika, you want to go look, click on the coin that you're looking at. You want to go down to the market uh, tab and you want to see what type of trading pairs it has, okay? I may have to do a live video to show you guys at some point. There's just a lot of information. I want to give it in a, you know, a timely manner. So once you find a, BC, a BTC trading pair on an exchange, sign up for that exchange, okay? So now you chose, your, now you chose a crypto. You probably will have to try to mine it to see how proficiently you get at it. So that's a whole nother setup as far as setting up the miner. Um, but you want to make sure that it has a BTC trading pair so you can trade it for Bitcoin. You want to sign up for that exchange. Now, once you sign up for that exchange, find out what the minimum trade amount for that exchange, for that, for that crypto. Because cryptos won't let you just trade really tiny amounts, exchanges, because they make no profit off very tiny amounts. So, that, so each exchange has a minimum amount that you can trade. Now... You go with that, stick with the minimum amount because that means you can still make a profit as long as you're submitting whatever, you know what I'm saying? At the minimum trade, that's good. That's all you need to get your foot in the door. All you need to get your foot in the door. So it, the ways you can do that is wait till you have enough crypto of that what you're mining where it does hit the minimum trade amount or and or the market evaluation of that crypto goes up where it does hit the, the trade amount. So that's an and or one. Okay, now, so you'll know if you're able to do it if the exchange actually lets you make the trade. If it doesn't, like you saw earlier on the uh, exchange video, it didn't let me make the trade because I didn't have the minimum amount. So, um, my bad. So that's, so that's how it's, you're going to know if you're able. If it lets you, then fine. If it doesn't, then you, you need more or it needs to be a higher valuation or you probably need more. Either you mine enough, yeah, or you mine enough or the market valuation goes up for the minimum trade. So that's all you really, really need to get your foot in the door. Find a crypto you can mine. Make sure it has a BTC trading pair. Find the exchange that it has a trading pair on. Sign up for the exchange. And then wait till you have enough or the end or the market goes up where you can make the minimum trade, okay? Now, once you're able to make the minimum trade amount, you can trade for BTC right away. So as soon as you're able to make that, you can literally sell for Bitcoin. So you literally just took the, your processing unit 
waited and mined a, a, a cryptocurrency and then as soon as you're able to sell you sell for Bitcoin now you got a valuable more valuable currency okay so once you're able uh, or you can wait for the price of what you have to continue to go up while you continue to mine and then you'll sell whatever you have at a higher price okay hopefully that makes sense hopefully that makes sense so this is ways you can take your crypto mining profit from your laptop, make the minimum trade, trade it for Bitcoin right away, or wait for the price to go up and trade it for Bitcoin at a higher price, all while you're continuing to mine. Now, I call this the snowball effect. The snowball effect is that once you make your first trade for Bitcoin, wait for the price of that crypto to drop in price, okay? It's up to you how much you let it drop, but wait for the price to go down, okay? Once the price goes down, then you go buy back in at a lower price on the exchange at a cheaper rate than what you sold it for. So you'll look how much you sold it for, you'll wait for it to go down, and then you're going to buy in again, okay, at a cheaper rate. Remember, all while you're doing this on the exchange, you're, continue, you're continuing to mine 24-7 or as much as you can, so you're still generating profit, right? So you're still generating profit, right? So once you buy back into the, your crypto at a cheaper price, once you get back, once you make that full successful trade, once you get back to it, you're going to buy more at a cheaper price than what you sold it for. So you're going to buy a bigger amount at a better price. Now, um, so while, that whole time that you were waiting for these trades to go through, you were mining cryptocurrency, right? You were mining that original uh, the original crypto that you traded for Bitcoin, then you bought back in. So in that time frame, you're going to take the profits that you mined, you're going to put them onto the exchange, and you're going to compound your interest of what uh, of what the what the crypto you had. So remember, you bought it back in at a cheaper price, right? Now you're going to combine it with the profits you made from mining. So now you have a larger amount of it. So and then you wait for that price to go up in the debt Bitcoin then you sell off for Bitcoin at a higher price. Literally, um, wash, wash, rinse, repeat for that sweet compound interest, okay? So that's, that's the strategy. That's the strategy. Mine, mine, wait till the valuation goes up and or you have enough to make the minimum trade, make that minimum trade, buy back in at a cheaper price, take what you mine, combine it with you bought back in, sell it at a higher price, Ross rinse, repeat. So you're compounding the interest both ways. So you're continuing to mine, but you're adding on to your profit each time. So you're slowly growing uh, your portfolio and evaluation as you're buying and selling, okay? Whew. Now, that is the intro to crypto mining. I know it was a lot of information. Go back, rewind the video, take notes, you know what I'm saying? Start applying this information. Take the Bitcoin that you bought from Coinbase, from Uphold, find an exchange. There's plenty of exchanges. I can, right now really can't recommend any, any personally, uh, but I will be doing that soon once I do my more of my due diligence. But you're gonna find an exchange. You can start off with Coin Falcon. You can start off with um, Bitrix. You know, you can start off with uh, Poloniex, different crypto exchanges. Remember, they have different fees, different withdrawal fees. These are things you want to take into consideration. All right, family. Much love and aloha. Hey, AKA Crypto Marley, AKA Crypto Obama. Holler at me. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm doing my thing here on Maui, kicking it, you know? And I just want to talk about, you know what I'm saying, uh, Bitcoin, we'll, we will always be mining. People like me and you watching this video, even people born even today, will always know of Bitcoin and will we always be mining Bitcoin. And the reason I say that is because the last Bitcoin that can be mined is in 2140. 2140 Suppo that supposedly that's what the numbers and the difficulty rate and uh the hashing rate and the mining rate the difficulty gets harder harder every four years as i i think I, i'm sure that's what it, the case is so 
uh, it's all strategical uh, how Satoshi set this shit up, but it's 2,140 will the, the last Bitcoin be mine. So in all reality, like, I don't know how many generations, uh, I don't even know, 50, 40, 50, 60, 70 generations ahead of us will really, really see how much Bitcoin is really worth. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and it's okay. Because even if I die, like part of me never wants to come back to this fucking bullshit. And the second part of me wants to come back to this bullshit just so I can get some more Bitcoin and really ball out. You know what I'm saying? But um, that's the real shit. That we will always be mining Bitcoin. I mean, when I say we, that means our, the society, will, the world we live in will always be mining Bitcoin for our entire lifetime. And even these kids today will be mining Bitcoin. And I would just like to come back and see what the world is like when all the Bitcoins are done mining. I would like to see how valuable Bitcoin it is when there's no more Bitcoin you can mine. Is there a new currency that would be more valuable because every, the whole world wants to keep mining? Or will that be the end? Will, will Bitcoin be the end all be all of real true decentralization and cryptocurrency? I'm not sure. I think society will always find more cryptos to to try to replace Bitcoin. But it being the first, it being the most decentralized and the longest blockchain, you know, who's to say? But it, it really won't be at its truest value way beyond our lifetime. And that's okay because, you know, I'm still, uh, I'm still fair whatever you call young. So I'm hoping to see the next 20, 30 years of what Bitcoin does to, to, does to the society. And I'm not doing it in it just to get rich. Like I really want to see what happens. And we're already seeing what happens when it comes to Bitcoin. You, I mean, the shit can't get any funkier. The sauce can't get any funkier. People can't get any more hype or any more against what's going on so we're still early in the game nine years bitcoin but the more research i do the more hacks that come about the more exchanges that get hacked all this shit it just makes me have more more and more faith in bitcoin even though i, I did a video about how i lost my faith in bitcoin i'm starting to have more and more faith in bitcoin and that's okay because i'm in this game just to learn like the rest of you but i'm not afraid to put my shit out there and you know i'm not shilling no coin right now. I would love to shill, but I don't shill. I don't even talk about that. I don't do any price prediction. I do a very little speculation. I talk about what's happening in the news right now, and I give you information you can apply uh, in real time. You know what I'm saying? So, we'll, I'll do a video about what cryptos I'm fucking with, but just understand that Bitcoin is only going to get more valuable. We will never know a life without Bitcoin. We will never know a life without Bitcoin being mined. Even though that there's 17 million Bitcoin that have already been mined, we're still not going to see the end of the end till 2040. And you don't even know what year of time of 2040. You don't know how difficult um, it's going to take to mine a Bitcoin at that point in life, that point in time. But at least the system's here. Ain't going nowhere. It'll never be shut down. And you know what I'm saying? Do whatever you can to stack your Satoshi. You know, that's what I that's the way I look at it. Stack I'm gonna gotta stack my Satoshis. I see a penny on the ground. I see recycle. Now I'm thinking Satoshis. Whatever I'm mining, I'm thinking Satoshis. How can if I'm trading Satoshis, if I'm investing Satoshis, how many Satoshis did I make? Seventy thousand, a, a million Satoshis, two million Satoshis, twenty one million Satoshis. Like, that's the that's how I think of, I don't even think of USD or fiat currency like that no more. I'm thinking of Satoshis and how can I rack as much Satoshis as early as I can in the game. You know what I'm saying? Because...